Hi. You are? My name is Samantha. Your name? Patrick. Hi. How are you doing? Thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having us. Wish we had veggie burgers we could order you. you know? <laughs> so, just tea. So, uh, what's your question? What, what's on your mind? Okay, well, I recently gave up drinking. And recently, you said? Recently, in April. Oh, April. Yeah, April. <laughs> And uh, I really use like your chanting as one of the tools to help uh -huh. me get through kind of the early stages of non-drinking, you know. So, like there was even one time I drove from Philadelphia to New York, and I just listened to Om Namah Shivaya and like repeat the whole time, and it was very soothing. So I was hoping that you could comment on, on why that was helpful. Like, why is chanting, especially on repeat, so soothing to people who are recovering from trauma or addiction? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. What, what you have? My question is similar in, in, as to. Uh, how to apply the message that you bring into our daily lives. And it's, um, it's prefaced almost with a story, really. After one of your events in, in New York last autumn, um, I saw a gentleman who I recognized from being in the audience um, yelling at a parking lot attendant because he didn't... It was me. <laughs> <laughs> because he didn't agree with the... Um, the price on the parking receipt. Ah. And it reminded me of the phrase, it's easy to be a holy man on top of a mountain. Mm. So my question, it, it, similar in that, how can we apply, how can people apply to their daily lives the message that you impart, that, that collective consciousness that's shared when we're together, but you know, how do we carry it on? All right, I, you know, I'm not sure what message I impart, but... Um, but I, I know what you mean. And you know what? It's, it's all about connecting. When I sing, I'm connecting with... I, the way I talk to myself about it, I say, I'm connecting with my guru. My guru represents this space, this presence of love, acceptance, calmness, love. You know, just being in this relaxed, where, where everything's okay, mm -hmm. you know, that's what it was like with him. In fact, it's probably the only time in my whole life when I was with him, I was home again. I was, this is where I, this is, this, this is it, this is home base. So we're like, we, we're like been shot out of a cannon, you know, we don't know where we came from, we don't know where we're going. But when we hear it, we know it. You still can't grab it because it's not to be grabbed. It's something to be recognized, recognized. It's inside of us. We have to we find a way to keep reconnecting again and again. When we're drinking or doing other kinds of addictive, destructive behaviors, we're completely unconnected to ourselves. We're on automatic. And many of us are trying to numb out some kind of pain that we can't deal with, some kind of trauma, without even being aware that that's what we're doing. And you get into a groove where you, you lose your will. You lose your will. It's like you're driving down the road, but you, you, you're not steering the car anymore. You took your hands off the wheel. So it's reconnecting is what finding our sense of direction again. And how do you do that? The chanting. For, for me, it's the chanting. When I heard it in India, I went, oh. And when you hear it, when I do it, and I, when I do it, I hear it. That's why I do it. I go, oh, that's right. And then I sit down to sing. Everything falls into place. Even if it's just for that two hours. Mm -hmm. After that, it can all fall shit again. But for those two hours, at least everything that's happening is, is just running through the system. I'm being here. I'm, I'm coming back out of those program behaviors, out of those thought forms out of those obsessive stories we tell ourselves, right? That's what you feel. It feels right, and you want that. That's what we all want. But in this, in this culture especially, we're not, we're not brought up to believe in that. We're, we're taught about organized religion, and we're taught about how to find pleasure in life. Those are the two things, and avoid pain. That's it, and none of that is gonna work. None of those strategies work. So, what you, the, the answer to the, to the situation that you brought up is learn to trust yourself, which is, 
you know, the hardest thing to do. Because we don't love ourselves. We don't, we've made the wrong decisions all our lives. Why should it be different now? The difference is you know. That's all. And when you know, you have a choice. When you don't have a choice, you don't have a choice. Next. When you wake up in the morning on the street, or on the bed, or on the floor, and you've been, you don't know what happened, you didn't have a choice. But once you, when you do have a choice, you can make that choice. You can make the choice that's better for you in your own eyes. It's not easy. We never taught to do that. So we really think we're powerless, and when we become, then we lose our will by not using it. So it's just a question of listening to yourself and following your heart, doing what you know is in your own best interest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not easy. You know, like you, sometimes you just have to get into a car, and put on the CD and drive for three hours just so you won't go get a drink. But that moment will pass and that gave you strength that will develop the ability to override those compulsive behaviors. Mm -hmm. And then once there's a little space in there, you can start looking at them in different ways. You know, you can go, you can get counseling and therapy and AA and all these things. They help. All these things help. But why do they help? Because they put you back on yourself. They teach you to listen to yourself and trust yourself. And also have the faith that it's going to be all right. You can listen to yourself and it's going to be all right. And when you hear that, when we hear the chanting, we know it's all right at that moment. But then the mind starts working, then the stories start going. That's where we lose our vote again. But in that moment, we have a vote. We vote for the right thing for us. We always do in that moment. And that's what we have to learn, not only to listen to, but to honor in ourselves. That we have, we know what's right and wrong. We know what's good for us. We know the difference. And we can do what we don't. We know, we, we've given up our strength, our, our compulsions have taken it away from us, in a way. But we're, our, we're still here, right? right? Last time I looked. So that's, this is where it is, always, right here, mm -hmm. you know? And it'll always be right here. When you ask yourself, where am I three days from now? The answer is going to be here. What you're dealing with at that moment might be a little different, but you're still here. You'll always be here. No matter how much you drink or smoke or how much drugs I took, I'm still here. It was here then, I'm here now. You're always here. But there's so much self-loathing and so much shame and guilt and fear going on in there that we don't want, it's hard for us to kind of settle back into ourselves because we don't like that stuff. So at some point you start to bring some of it out of the closet and throw it away, little by little. But that takes strength that we not always have. We don't always have that much strength. But we always have the strength to say no or yes, when it, you know. You always have, because you're here. If you were here, there'd be nothing to talk about. If you weren't here, there'd be nothing to talk about. But, and you'll always be here, regardless of what you do to try to numb that out when I was going to kill myself in, in India, Maharaji looked at me and said, ah, what are you going to do, jump in the river? <laughs> you know, I thought, he's not taking this seriously. He said, worldly people don't die. He looked at me, worldly people don't die. Said, then he looked at me, and this little Hindu guy in a blanket looks at me and said, only Jesus died the real death. And I went, huh? He said, because he never thought of himself. There was no, he, he, his life was for others. There was no personal selfish ego in there anymore. It had been merged with God. So he, 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 Maharaji said, he tried to die, but he became immortal. That's the way he put it. Mm -hmm. So all we do is think about ourselves all day long. And most of the stories we tell ourselves are not very pleasant. When those stories, arise less and less, and then we, we begin to get a feeling for ourselves that's a little different. And you recognize you're not the stories that you've been telling yourself all this time. Those are programs that we were learned behaviors that came, we brought something into this life, we were taught certain behaviors and we're living it out, but we're here, we'll always be here, even if 
even if we commit suicide, we'll be here. It'll just be a little different. But we are here. And this is a hard one, you know. I and mean, that's what he showed me. Because really, I, I was going to kill myself. I was I, having a complete breakdown. I say complete, but how complete could it have been? <laughs> I'm still here. Mm -hmm. All these years later. So, we have to learn to trust ourselves and give ourselves a break. Because mm -hmm. nobody teaches us how to do that. We have to teach ourselves how to do that. That's all. Nothing else is required. So you do whatever you can, you know, you have to. Get in the car and drive for three hours. Do that. Turn it up. You know? Whatever it takes, that's what you do. And that's how you get strength. Mm -hmm. So they say. <laughs> it's a long, strange journey from, from here to here. You know, but we have to go like all the way around just to get back to where we are. Okay. Good. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Take care. <laughs> Take your cup.